What would happen if Hal had to face off with his former evil self? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panel section images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. When we last left off, the Green Lantern Corps was missing and Hal Jordan was a renegade. He couldn't find where the Corps had gone, so he decided to go home and make sure that his family was safe. But when he got there, he discovered that maybe he didn't have the power to fix everything. And to make matters worse, Parallax is arriving. Parallax remembers how, in his timeline, he couldn't save his home city of Coast City. He lost it, and he decided that he needed the power to protect everything. This led him to killing every Green Lantern and taking all of their rings. But now, here is Coast City. He won't let it fall again, and he'll take down any threat to the city and defend it. Now, that threat is close. Back in Jim's apartment, Hal throws a surprise welcome home party for Howard on his first day after returning home after he was injured in Hal's attempt to save him. Jim tells Hal that he remembers giving him the money to get actual decorations, but Hal tells him that he got Howard something better with the money. An RC Quadrone! Howard asks if he can go outside and play with his new toy, and Jim tells Sue and the kids that they can go ahead, and that him and Hal, they'll be down shortly. Jim goes out to see his brother Hal standing in the balcony, and he tells him that he is the one with the child in the wheelchair. So why is it that Hal looks like he needs a hug? Hal says that he's still blaming himself for not being able to protect Howard. But Jim tells him that there's no way that he could have known what was going to happen. He goes on to explain to Hal that while he does have this power, Hal thinks that it makes him all powerful, like he can stop anything. But sometimes you just have to let the kids go to the bus stop and hope for the best. And someday, Hal will understand that when he has his own kids. Later, down on the park, Howard begins to play with his new drone, but he ends up flying it into some of the tree branches, getting it stuck. Then, a giant green hand comes out of nowhere, pulling it out of the tree, and it hands Howard back the drone. Howard is shocked at what he's seeing. It's Parallax, but Parallax tells him to give him a hug. It's okay, it's Hal. And in response, a giant construct hammer flies through, knocking Parallax down. And Hal shouts at him, no one messes with my family. Jim tells Sue to take the kids away. And then he looks at Hal and he tells him, Hal, that's you. Hal tells Jim that he's fought many shapeshifters and mental projections of himself in the past. Just know that he is the real Hal. And Hal begins telling a story that only the two of them would know. But before Hal can finish it, Parallax finishes the story. Hal tells Jim to run and he begins to bind Parallax in chains, telling him that he needs to leave. And Parallax says that he abandoned Coast City once, and it died! He then breaks out of the chains and he knocks Hal back. But Hal quickly gets back up and he charges back into fight. But before Hal can land an attack, Parallax creates a giant explosion, knocking Hal away again. Hal asks, how? He has the power of a dozen rings. And Parallax asks him, a dozen? I wield the power of 3,600. Hal asks him if it's really him, the him from the past. And Parallax tells him, I'm better. I'm Parallax. The two begin fighting it out, and Parallax lands most of the blows until Parallax has Hal pinned to a car. Parallax then moves in to kill him, but Hal stops him and knocks him away, creating a herd of charging rams. Hal then notices Parallax spitting up yellow blood, and he tells him that he knows that he's infected with something that feeds on fear, and it's making him do unspeakable things. Hal knows this situation. He was in this situation. Hal goes on to tell Parallax that he's met copies of himself in the past, even the bad ones. But Parallax is different because they share their memories. So please, let him help him. Parallax screams no when he knocks Hal away, telling him that he will fail to protect the city. Parallax begins to use his constructs to hold and choke Hal, but something happens to Hal. His eyes begin to go green and he starts to break out of Parallax constructs and he tells Parallax that he doesn't know how strong he is. Hal doesn't even know how strong he is. As Hal stands, he begins to create a giant construct of himself, and he tells Parallax, Let's find out how strong I am. Parallax tells him to look at what he's becoming. He shouldn't even exist. He will find more power, and then he will come back for Coast City and this Hal Jordan's life. Parallax then shoots off into the sky, escaping Hal before he has a chance to see what Hal can do. As Parallax leaves, Hal falls to his knees, asking himself, What is he? He's in control, isn't he? He has willpower. Back at the apartment, as Jim is picking up his glasses, Hal calls out to him, and Jim turns around and he sees the construct Hal Jordan, and he tells him that he thinks something is happening to him. Hal begins to tell Jim that he feels strange, and he asks him, do I look strange? And Jim tells him, well, yeah, you could say that. And then the construct begins to ask Hal, who is Hal? 
and Jim begins to remind him that he is Hal Jordan and he reminds him of all of his adventures as the Green Lantern. He is Hal Jordan! Jim tells him that he changed into one of those light things and Hal tells him that he's not sure. He thinks he became Will, which means that he needs some help, so he must go. Jim asks what should he do if that Parallax guy comes back and Hal tells him that Parallax will be after him now, so don't worry, if he leaves the planet everything should be fine. But for now, he has to go. And as Hal leaves, he tells Jim to please be safe, but have no fear, little brother. I'll be fine. Back up in his ship, Virgo and Trapper are still there, and they got caught by a group calling themselves the Agents of the Grey. They're here to collect Virgo. One of the men, Dome, says that a scan of the ship picked up a comm signal before they boarded the ship. Rank, the leader in charge of the men, tells everyone that they need to find out where that signal goes to. And as Rank takes control of the ship, he sees another one of his men, Speechmaker, read through Virgo's memories to see exactly where that signal that they found went. And on the screen, the back of Speechmaker's head begins to light up. And Rank begins to see an image of Hal Jordan. The video playing states that Hal Jordan went looking for his family back on Earth. And as Rank tells them that they're going to head towards Earth, a green light begins to dart through the ship at Rank and his men. When Rank looks up, he sees Hal, and Hal tells him that before he goes to the trouble of finding him, he'll give Rank a fair warning that looking for Hal is where his trouble is about to get started. The next thing Hal asks them is, who the hell are they? Rank tells them that they are the Grey Agents. They are the law. And Hal is now under arrest. He is a renegade. And Hal tells him he gets it. They think that he's a bad guy. But if he was really a bad guy, they would all be dead. So that should give them a clue that he's not all that bad and something else is going on. But if they don't release his crew, Virgo and Trapper, things will get real on purpose real fast. Rank tells his men to attack and as Hal tries to fight, the men soon take him over. Then Hal looks back and he sees Speechmaker and Speechmaker grabs a hold of Hal's head and begins to display Hal's past memories. Everyone watches Hal's memories of his family, but Hal begins to fight the grasp and with an explosion of willpower, he knocks everyone away. He struggles to get back up and he tells Trapper that it's time to go. And he throws a blade, freeing Trapper. Two Pounder begins to charge at Hal and Hal tries to punch him. But Two Pounder grabs a hold of Hal's fist and that's when Hal asks him if he's ever shaken a beer and popped the top. And Trapper yells at him, don't pop the top. And Hal says that it looks kind of like this. And that's when his arm begins to glow green and then Two Pounder's hand explodes. And then in a flash of green, Hal's hand begins to change back into the construct that he was before begins to become transparent and green, and Rank calls out to Pounder, but soon Hal's entire body changes into the transparent green construct, and he tells Rank to stop. He can't be responsible for what's about to happen. Rank tries opening fire on Hal, but nothing happens, and Hal tells him that he is making him do this. Before Hal can do anything else, Virgo jumps in, knocking Rank out, and he tells Hal to resist it, resist the power. With Rank on the floor, Virgo tells Hal that he needs to calm down, and slowly, Hal begins to change back to the way he was before. But before Virgo can ask what's going on, the last member of the group, Daka, grabs Virgo and holds him hostage. Rank gets back up, telling him that Hal is done, and Hal creates a gun, and he hands it to Trapper. Hal tells him that he's trying to control himself, because honestly, who knows what will happen if he doesn't. So Trapper is going to have to take over for now. He then explains that the cuff that is on Virgo is connected to Trapper. So if Virgo dies, so does Trapper. This is kind of like self-defense. And Rank tells him that this is his last warning. But Hal tells Trapper, take him. In a flash, Trapper shoots, hitting the man holding Virgo hostage. Rank then grabs a hold of Daka as they're bleeding. And Hal tells them that the shot doesn't have to be fatal. But they need to leave now, or they will soon find out what happens if they push Hal too far. Rank and his men begin to fade out to go back to their ships, and he tells Hal to make sure that he's a step ahead, because he wouldn't want anyone executing him before Rank can. Hal then takes the prisoner cuff that would link to Virgo and Trapper together off of them, and he tells them that this is the end of the line for their group. It's time for him to head out on his own. Virgo tries to stop him, but Hal tells him that he is the only Green Lantern left, so he needs to step up, or people like the Grey Agents will try to take advantage and become the new law. Trapper tells him that he's got a death sentence on his mind. And Hal tells him maybe, but whatever he's becoming, he has a new mission now. So let's see where that takes him. Now this is the conclusion to Hal Jordan's story in the DCU. Now Rebirth is starting up, and there's a book called Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps in the DC Rebirth. Now the Green Lantern Corps did get back to the proper universe, and you can watch that video by watching Green Lantern's Edge of Oblivion, which is already on the channel, or picking up the book yourself. We don't know if they're going to continue the storyline with Hal Jordan just yet, but they're claiming that a lot of these loose plot lines will be wrapped up in one way or another. 
So I hope you guys are as excited about Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps Rebirth as I am. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Comic Story and on Instagram at Comic Story.